Given that the YouTube AI Summarizer is one of the most popular paid services today, range from $10 to $20 per month, I thought maybe I could create my own YouTube AI Summarizer desktop application at a fraction of the cost. In this tutorial, I will go through the process of building my own YouTube AI Summarizer desktop app using Python. One of the benefits of creating your own desktop application is that you have the flexibility to control the user interface and add custom features and extend functionalities based on your needs. Plus, you can easily integrate your own application with third-party APIs or generative AIs. And let's be honest, the majority of the time, you probably don't need all the features most services are offering. On the screen is uh, the YouTube AI Summarizer app created using Python based on the the PyQt6 desktop app framework. On the top is the, the video ID input field to enter a video's URL or ID. In the middle is the text field to display the transcript. At the bottom, we have two buttons to download and summarize transcript. To demonstrate, I'm going to copy paste the video URL of this video, how to talk to anyone by Leo Laundis in the video ID field and click download transcript to download the video's transcript first. Next, I can click summarize transcript to convert the transcript into an organized summary using Grok Generative AI API. Before we dive into the tutorial, make sure you create an API key from Grok's website. You can find the link in the description below. Grok uses open source models and currently their API is free to use. To build the application, we will be using Markdown Py Qt6, Grok, and YouTube Transcript API Python libraries. In your project folder, launch a terminal and type the command pip install markdown pyqt6 grok youtube transcript api. Open your code editor, create a blank python file, and name it app.py. Import the sys os rejects grok and markdown modules. From youtube transcript api import youtube transcript api. The library is used to retrieve YouTube video transcripts. To create the desktop application from pyqt6qt.widgets, import the widgets showing on the screen. From Qt GUI, import Q icon to manage the application window icon. To download the video's transcript, create a function called extract video ID. This function will extract the video ID from a given string, which can be either a YouTube URL or a video ID. Inside the function, insert an if statement to check if the input string is a URL by matching it against a regular expression pattern that starts with HTTP or HTTPS. Next, insert an if statement to check if the URL is from YouTube by looking for youtube.com in the string. If it's a YouTube URL, Use regular expression to extract the video ID from the parameter v in the URL. Otherwise, insert an if statement to check if the URL is a shortened YouTube URL by looking for youtube.b in the string. If the input string is not a URL, assume it is a direct video ID and return it as is. To create the base of the app window, Create a class called app window that inherits from Q widget. Inside the constructor, set the window title and window icon. To set the app's icon, make sure to wrap the file path with Q icon class. Set the initial window size to 800 by 600 pixels using the resize method. Here we can use set style sheet method to apply a CSS property to set the font size to 14 pixels. To manage the layouts, create a dictionary called self.layout. Create a QVBox layout as the main layout and assign main as the key. Set this QVBox layout as the main layout of the app using the setLayout method. To set up the user interface components, call the init UI method, in which we will be creating in a moment. 
To manage widgets by widget type, create a method called inner container. Inside the inner container method, create the dictionaries to store buttons, line edits, and labels. Create the inner UI method to construct the user interface components. I like to create the UI elements in sections. That way I can easily move around the components. In the init UI method, call the init container method to construct the widget containers. To create the video input section, create the add video input section method. Inside the add video input section method, start by creating a horizontal layout and add it to the main layout dictionary with the key video input. Next, create a label with the text video ID and add it to the video input layout. To add the input field, create a QLine edit object and set its fixed width to 500 pixels. Also, set the placeholder text to enter video ID or URL. Add this line edit to the video input layout. Finally, add a stretchable space to the video input layout using the add stretch method. This adds a stretchable space with zero minimum size and a stretch factor to the end of the layout, ensuring proper spacing of the widgets. Call the add video input section method in the init UI method. To output the transcript, create the add output section method with an underscore. Inside the method, create a label with the text transcript and add it to the main layout. Next, create a queue text edit object called self.textedit to display the transcript. Add the text edit object to the main layout. In the init UI method, call the add output section method. The button section is the last section we need to create. Inside the method, create a horizontal layout and add it to the main layout dictionary with the key transcript download. Next, create a push button with the text download transcript. The ampersand symbol is used to assign keystroke shortcut. Set the button's fixed width to 175 pixels and connect its click signal to the download transcript method. Add this button to the transcript download layout. Then create another push button with the text summarize transcript. Set its fixed width to 150 pixels and connect its click signal to the summarize transcript method. Add this button to the transcript download layout. Finally, add a stretchable space to the transcript download layout using the add stretch method. Go back to the init UI and call the add button section. Finally, create a status bar and add to the main layout. The next step is to create the methods to download and summarize YouTube videos transcript. Create a method called download transcript. Inside the method, start by retrieving the text from the video ID input field and storing it in the variable video ID. Insert an if statement to check if video ID is empty. If it is, Display a message in the status bar saying, please enter a video ID or URL and return from the method. If video ID is not empty, clear any uh, messages in the status bar. Use the extract video ID function to get the video ID from the input string. Then insert a try accept block to handle possible errors during the transcript download process. Inside the try block, Use the YouTube transcript API docket transcript method to get the transcript for the given video ID, then store the output in a variable called transcript. Format the transcript by joining each line of text with a new line character and store it in a variable called transcript text. Then insert the transcript in the text edit widget. In case if we run into an exception in the accept block, we will simply insert the error message in the text edit widget and exit the function. The summarize transcript method is the last method we need to create. 
create a method called summarize transcript. Inside the method, start by retrieving the text from the text edit widget and storing it in a variable called transcript text. Insert an if statement to check if text edit widget is empty. If it is, display a message in the status bar saying transcript is empty and exit the method. Otherwise, clear the messages in the status bar. To summarize the transcript, from client.chat.completions.create. Insert the prompt, summarize the video transcript below into bullet points, followed by insert the transcript text from text text edit widget. For demonstration, I will use the Llama 38B8192 models, and I'll set the temperature to 0.3 to ensure the output is consistent. And because the default output is in Markdown, or we can specify you want the output to return as HTML. From my personal experience, render the output in HTML will incur more token usage comparing to Markdown. Use the markdown.markdown function to convert the summarized output from Markdown to HTML. Store this HTML content in a variable called HTML underscore content. Finally, we can display the HTML markup using textedit.setHTML method. Now we're done with building the desktop UI. The last step is adding the entry point. Insert an if statement to check the script is the main script. Create a variable called API key to store Grox API key. Create a Grox client instance and pass the API key to the API key parameter. You can also create an environment variable called Grok API key to store the API key. In that case, the client instance will read the API key from the environment variable. Next, create a create application object called app, passing in sis.rgv as an argument. Set the application style to fusion using the setStyle method. To set the color theme of my app, I will load my dark pro CSS style sheet to the app object to display the app window. Create an instance of the app window object and name it app window. Call the show method to display the main application window. Finally, call sys.exitapp.exec to start the application's event loop and use sys.exit to terminate the event loop when the application is closed. And we're officially done with the desktop app development. To test the app, launch the app, enter a YouTube video URL or a video ID in the video ID input, download the transcript and summarize transcript to ensure the functions are working successfully. Also check if the status bar displays an error message when video ID or transcript are not presented when you try to download transcript or summarize a transcript. And that concludes this tutorial. I hope you found this video useful. For more tutorials, make sure to subscribe and don't forget to like the video. If you have any questions or topics you would like me to cover in future videos, please leave a comment below. Happy coding! And I'll see you in the next video.